I know every win is important, but uh, coming off the last two and particularly the last one and the feelings, you know, following the performance there in the last three quarters, you know, how satisfying is a win like this and the way you guys are able to battle back? Yeah, it was a great win. Uh, you know, we needed it, I think, for our soul. And, uh, you know, a lot's been thrown at us, a lot of, uh, you know, new things, uh, you know, new group, new coaches. Um, I keep going over it, the, all, all the stuff we're facing this year and weren't happy with the last performance. We came out tonight and weren't great in the first half. We weren't physical enough. We, we lacked communication and uh, we asked them to compete in the second half to up their level uh, physically and demand and compete and, and, and win some little battles. And, uh, and that's what they did and, and they got a, a victory and they deserved it for uh, sticking with it and sticking together. Can you take us into the decision to put Bruce Brown in the uh, starting lineup and, and um, how you feel about the way he performed yeah. um, throughout the game, particularly in crunch time? Bruce was great, uh, unbelievable. Um, you know, played his butt off, played hard, made some uh, tough shots and some timely baskets, uh, you know, and, and, and guarded his man. You know, I think the decision was, I think the second unit needs Karras uh, as a ball handler and creator. Um, I also... You know, I need to protect Harris. You know, when he starts, he ends up playing 30 plus minutes. You know, almost without a doubt. And you know, with five games and seven nights, let alone 17 games in 31 days, you know, Harris is a guy that you have to protect um, with his with his injury history a little bit. Um, he's in great shape. He may never have a problem again, but you have to protect him and, and give him a chance. So I thought that would allow us to control his minutes. Um, it would allow us to have a playmaker on the second unit, and so. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to adapt continually, I think, this year, because who knows what's around the corner. So, uh, you know, proud of Karras. He was outstanding tonight as well. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve Pupil, was there anything uh, tactical in the third quarter? I uh, mean, when you're down 18 and you flip that to a seven point, uh, seven point lead, was there anything tactical, or was that just asking guys to reach down deeper and? Secondly, obviously, DJ doesn't play. J.A. gets 36 minutes. Is that just rewarding whoever's playing the best at that point? Yeah, I mean, I think the tactics were to get tighter to our man, communicate, be more physical. Um, you know, I think the breakdowns were largely we weren't attached, we weren't talking, and we were letting them go wherever they wanted. And they're too good an offensive team. So that, that if you want to call that tactical, mental, emotional, whatever, uh, you know, I think that was a big adjustment. Um, you know, DJ, tonight, you know, they go largely their backup center is Jermichael Green or, uh, or the big fella, but he's not necessarily a post player. So we tried to, you know, as much as anything, develop our small lineup, take a look at it. So it, it partly tactical because of the way they match up, but partly just, you know, if we want to have a, a, a small lineup that's effective, we got to take some looks at it. And so that was sort of the decision tonight, you know. Um, you know, I hope other nights TJ gets minutes, but I was proud of him for the way he supported his teammates and um, was a great force for us because he is a vet and a, and a big personality that guys look to in our locker room. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Coach, can you uh, just describe the performance that Kevin had tonight and what does it do for the team when he comes out and sets the tone the way he did today? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's... it's it's a, it's a pleasure to, to coach him. He's so so talented and loves the game. Uh, you know, I, I thought he, he he you know he turned the ball over early, but he 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 calmed down. I think that's part of this process of him coming back to playing is that it's it's not going to be smooth off the bat. He's I, I said early 15 to, to to 20 games, and I think that's that's even. Um, you know, that, that maybe I need to be more conservative with that number just because it's such a lot thrown at him, the, the climb he's had back here. But he was unbelievable, made the big shot at the end, but 13 assists. Um, you know, he, he led us, and I think his attitude was great. You know, there's moments when in the first half where I could tell he's frustrated and he, and he held on to it for his teammates, and he rubs off so positively on his teammates. You know, they look up to him, and they, they know how gifted he is. And, and uh, when he sticks with them and has, the, has that leadership – qualities that he had tonight, you know, the guys end up, you know, I, I think feeding off it and, and, and performing. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Steve, sticking with, with Kevin for a minute, how aware are you when you're coaching that he is 
climbing into the top 30 all time and scoring in an individual game and then passing Dwayne Wade in those numbers. Does that enter your mind at all? Did you know that? I had no clue. Uh, Aaron Harris told me before I took the podium. So, <laughs> um, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, he's going to keep climbing. He's going to, you know, I'm sure he's going to skyrocket all the way up there. If we're lucky to have good fortune and health, uh, he is um, a walking bucket. And, you know, he, he he's a, uh, no matter what you throw at him, no matter who's on the floor, he's going to find a way to get 25, 30 points. So, um, he hit it. This is this is nothing. He's going to keep climbing and keep catching guys, you know. And I don't know where the next guy is or the guys ahead of them, but uh, he's going to catch a bunch of them. That's for sure. And last question, we'll go to Bruce Beck with NBC New York. Hey Steve, facing adversity, you often find out a lot about your team, sometimes even about yourself. What, what did you find out about your ball club tonight, specifically in the second half? Yeah, you know, it shows we have the resolve, um, you know, that we can find the connectivity. Uh, you know, the, these nights, you know, even the ones where we've taken it on the chin here this season in some close games, they, they are what provide you the biggest lessons and the, the most room for growth. So tonight is beautiful to win it, uh, to come back, to, to lock up defensively and, and to start uh, making shots and the ball moving and, and, and playing the way I think we're capable of playing. But, uh, you know, you, you always, especially a new group like this, you're looking to, to build that, that connectivity and that resolve and, that, you know, that ability to fight through adversity. And so you can't cheat that process. So these opportunities for us to, to say, hey, we've been there and, and survived. We've been there and it hurt and we built through it. Uh, um, and, and here we are tonight coming out on the other side. And, and those are, that's going to happen throughout the year, especially in this crazy season. But as long as each night we take something new from it and, and build our resolve, but also, you know, build, build that, you know, collective identity. Um, that's what it's going to take to be in these moments and to be comfortable under pressure and to, to thrive even under pressure eventually. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.